All right. Yep, we're good. Sorry yep. about that. Uh, good. Dan, how are you doing? How's everything? Good. Good. Just uh, you know, get over another hump. It's been a lot of uh, you know a lot of work to. Well, first of all, by the Big Ten to to get schedules out for not only baseball but all the other sports, and then a lot of things that we had to work through as a coaching group. And uh, you know, we 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 got a schedule, initial schedule about well, it was on Saturday, and we chose as a coaching group not to push that out yet because there were a lot of questions that needed to be answered, and we needed to work through a lot of different things, <clears throat> uh, change our game manual. Uh, with the things we can and can't do, just so everybody's on the same page. And I wouldn't say we had our final call this morning. We had a call this morning. It was very productive. We got a lot of things laid out, um, and we're, we were comfortable with with releasing the schedule. And then also, uh, we've worked through some things that you know we'll add to the schedule as far as dates, times, all those things over the next few days. So it, it's it's kind of nice. It's it's been a grind and. Uh, you know, everybody involved, I know, is excited to get the schedule so we can, you know, feel like we're moving forward now. Right. It's got to be good to just be able to get going fully. Um, I know this might be a big question, but do you have any idea what went into the decision of having no Big Ten tournament? Yeah, absolutely, I do. Um, so th that was a coach's choice, 100% a coach's choice. And it was our opinion that um, with the 44 game limit, if we did not play that final weekend, there would be some teams that would only play 40, uh, 30, you know, 41. If you start losing some to weather, they could have been in the mid thirties. And we're just trying to give every athlete in the big 10 in baseball, the opportunity to play as many games as possible. If, if everybody were qualified for the tournament, you have a round robin format where you're, you know, everyone's assured of three games, it would have been different. This is going to allow everybody to play three to four games that final weekend. And we just felt like that was the right thing to do for every athlete in the sport of baseball in the Big Ten. Right. Um, and usually, with you know, with every sport, there's something that everybody's working towards, whether it's a tournament, a championship, or just any kind of playoff spot. So now you've had last season cut short. Now there's no Big Ten tournament. What are you guiding your team to work towards essentially? Is it a record now? Like what is that end hopeful goal for you guys? And every year, same thing, NCAA tournament bid. The, the, the bottom line is get the NCAA tournament so you can play for a national championship. And that's, that's what we've done every year. That's what we talk about. That's, you know, that's what uh, our goal will be. And so that, that doesn't change. It's just a different format this year. And uh, you don't have to go through the Big Ten tournament to to do that. Uh, the, the automatic qualifier this year will be the Big Ten champion rather than the Big Ten tournament champion. So, um, other than just having that that uh, you know that that opportunity to play out in Omaha in the Big Ten tournament, it, 100%, it's to get ourselves in position to be selected on that selection Monday. Great, thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, Dan, I, I was looking at the schedule and noticed those pods look pretty interesting, you know, multiple teams on a weekend. Just talk a little bit about those. And was that one of the uh, deals in trying to get everything condensed into the schedule as well? It's not a, as much as, of, of being condensed. And the fact that, that, you know, we're different from a lot of sports in the Big Ten where we only have 13 teams. And so – somebody would have to sit out and have a buy and, and nobody wanted to sit when we're already sitting the first two weekends. And, and then, you know, COVID, uh, you know, where you could have to sit because a team gets shut down. Uh, what the pod does for us, it, it allows us to schedule each and every team all 13 weekends. And then the thing that, that we've talked about as a coaching group, let's say we're supposed to play Northwestern on a given weekend they get shut down because of COVID, all of a sudden we can take one of the teams out of that pod and have a head-to-head -head series. So it's a little bit of protection uh, if, if we only have one team that would get in trouble. So we've tried to look at this from all different angles. Uh, we'll continue to work to develop the, the schedules for those pods. I think we're close on a lot of things with 
with actual times and, and how that's all going to work. Uh, but we wanted to run some things by our administrations before that went public, just to make sure what we were thinking and the plans we had were something that, that was feasible and that they would allow us to do. But again, not, not having to sit with a buy and opportunities for someone to play if one team got shut down because of COVID. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Dan, do you anticipate the double headers will be nines? Uh, it it kind of depends. Pod play, they have to be nines. Because if you if you don't do it in pod play, then it, they have to be all sevens, and, and all sevens aren't legal. Uh, you can only do sevens on double headers. There's, there's a, a couple scenarios we're working through where a, a, one of the games in a double header could be a, a seven. Uh, but again, we, we need to get some approvals on how that all works and get it in the game manual uh, before any of that stuff goes public. So again, that's one of the things we're working for towards and, and we'll know 100%, I would say within 48 hours, maybe sooner. Um, man, I just lost my, my question for you and I'm sure it was a really Perfect. good one. <laughs> I know it was. You've been through a lot as a coach in your years. You've had fantastically successful seasons. You've had seasons where you felt maybe like you've struggled. Is this maybe the most stress that you've had to go through as a coach? And does the baseball part almost feel like that's the easy part of all this? It's, I hope the baseball part's the easy part of it. Um, it it's been frustrating for everybody involved. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it, it's no different from what everybody in this world's going through sure. right now, as far as you don't have the social activity, things are taken away from us, there's so much uncertainty. Uh, I will say, you know, I'm glad I'm going through this as an older coach um, because I don't know how I would have handled it uh, as a younger coach. The, the whole thing that I think you have to do in this situation is really focus on the players and what we can do to give them the best experience. Uh, you know, obviously we want to win. We want to win at a high level. Um, and, and some things will – will take place you know i think when you're when you're younger at least the way i was when i was younger i thought i could control everything and you can't there's just certain things that are you know out of your control and so i've really focused on the things that that we can control the things that we can make decisions on that that uh, will help the entire conference uh has it been a difficult year it has but i think i mentioned this before you know i I feel like from myself, coaching staff standpoint, we have next year, the following year, the year after, you know, we have, we have this whole career that we're working through that, that if you're fortunate, it lasts for a while. You look at the players, they have such a short window. They, they have a short window in college. They have a short window to compete at a high level. You know, your body changes, injuries, so many things. And so they're the ones that, that I really feel for because again, we're, their, their window is really being cut down. Well, when you look, even if they get another year of eligibility like we did last year and they have two years, the vast majority of the players aren't gonna use those. They're either gonna be drafted, move on and play professionally, or they're gonna figure out that their time's up and they wanna go into the working world, and start making money and get off mom and dad's payroll and mom and dad want them to get off the payroll. So uh, that, that's who it's been tough on. It's, you know, it's our job to help them navigate through it uh, and, and I'm a true believer that, you know, we're in education. Uh, obviously, we're coaches, but it's part of educating. And I think when you're educators, you, you have to help young people navigate. So that's what our staff, I think, has done a very good job of, of helping young people navigate. And, and we're in good shape. We just need to make sure that they're in a good frame of mind and, and have a, you know, an opportunity to compete at a high level. How they respond learning the schedule finally? No idea. I haven't seen them. Oh, okay. I assume they know it. We're going out to practice soon. Okay. You know, I, I, I've told them, I've told them from the start until something's set in stone, I'm not going to tell you because when it changes, you know, it just, it takes the wind out of the sails. I'll have a discussion with them after practice about a couple things uh, just to give them a little bit of a heads up. I'm sure they're excited uh, to, to see, you know, what, what's ahead of them and, and have some, you know, some vision of, of where we'll be, when we'll be there, who we'll be playing. I, it's got to get them excited. You know, if you look, these next two weekends are going to be tough on them because everybody else is going to be playing and we're not. We're going to be sitting at home. I think the only thing that 
you know, will make some of them laugh is the fact that some people aren't going to be playing because of weather. It'll be <laughs> the first time in history that they get snowed out in Texas and some places. But um, I, I'm sure they're excited, but I have not had an opportunity to talk to them about anything yet because we just made some decisions literally uh, the middle of the morning, decided when we were going to um, allow everyone to release this. And then, uh, you know, again, I won't see them until we're done with this call. Right. Hey, thanks, Dan. Thank you. Hey, Dan, hope you're doing well. I guess just with this kind of different format this year, is are there going to be differences in like the pitching lineup and everything, or how do you kind of maneuver through that? It's a good question. A lot of unknowns. Uh, you know, when we play on the pod weekends, you, you could have someone that's, you know, that's the last place team in the conference that you play early in, in that weekend, and the, the teams in first place you could be later everybody's going to have a little bit different uh, feel or or idea of, of how that should work. You know, do you just throw your pitchers one through four the way you normally would? Do you try to match them up? Do you go right versus left? Uh, you know, how are we going to do that on the weekends? Uh, when you have four games playing two different teams, as far as how you're going to do, you, 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 you or kind of use your catchers, who's going to DH? There, there are so many things that our unknowns, it's going to be fun. I mean, that's that's the part that's fun about coaching is putting the puzzle pieces together. And uh, I'm looking forward to that part. Uh, we, we If we can stay healthy, we have some depth. Uh, I've got some guys that, that will be absolutely awesome coming off the be uh, bench in pinch hit situations. Uh, I'm going to have multiple uh, guys at different positions that, that can really help us, uh, multiple people that can DH. And so just fitting those pieces together, keeping everybody fresh, healthy, uh, getting through any injuries we have, hopefully no COVID issues, but it's going to be a puzzle this year. And, and uh, th those are the challenges that I really enjoy. Yeah. And I, just, I don't have an answer for you, basically. That's okay. <laughs> and then I guess just with a lot of, there's going to be a lot of pitching changes this year in general, obviously losing some of your stars to graduation and the MLB and everything. Um, how do you think you're, pitching staff and your, you know, bullpen has just responded, responded to that. And has there been anybody who has stepped up that you've been really impressed by? Well, I think we have a chance to be very good on the mound. Our, our pitch coach, Mark Allen's done a great job. Uh, we've got some new additions to the staff. We've got some guys that are a year older. Uh, and when I say that a year older and more mature, they've done a great job uh, changing, changing their body types and, and uh, working to, to get stronger and, and have more endurance. I mean, there's a lot of really good things that have been happening with the staff. Uh, some things will have to sort themselves out and we've got a lot of competition. And, and I've always said this, sometimes you don't know who you're gonna throw because you don't know. It's kind of like, who do we have? Well, I don't feel that way. I feel like, you know, we've got great competition because we got a lot of guys that, that are really going to be key pieces for us. And, who's going to show that they can be that starter and get us deep in the game and who's going to show us they're going to be more valuable uh, out of the bullpen, maybe for an out or an inning or whatever it may be. So a lot of things that, that we need to figure out uh, because we really didn't get scrimmage in the fall and you didn't have those outside competitions, a uh, few more question marks than you would want early in the year. Uh, you know, we're not going to be able to play teams early in the year and experiment a little bit. I mean, we're still going to have to experiment some, but every game counts for the conference. Just, just a lot of different pieces, but I, I do think that our pitching staff has a chance to be really good. Thanks, Dan. Hey, Dan, you had kind of mentioned it, you know, with people getting snowed out that are not usually getting snowed out. Is it going to be a bigger advantage or disadvantage jumping right into conference play with no non-conference games right out of the shoot? I really like playing the non-conference uh, games. A number of reasons, you know, you, you do get a chance um, to get some people's feet wet. I mean, those early games, you, you have to throw some guys out there to see how they're going to uh, respond. If you never play a freshman, they're always going to be a freshman. So you have to push those guys out there. Uh, and, and I really enjoy playing those really good teams early, those high RPI teams to build our RPI uh, for our guys to understand the level we have to play at. You, know, you can talk about the level you have to play at and talk about showing up every day. Uh, but if you don't play really good, high-quality competition on a regular basis, guys truly don't understand that. So I, I will miss that competitive part. Uh, you know, we had some really good series this year. Uh, you know, we're going to play Coastal Carolina. We were going to go into Louisiana Tech. We had LSU. We had some great series, and I was really looking forward to those. But we don't have them, 
And so you can't worry about those things. Uh, we'll, we'll do a great job uh, of coming to the ballpark with energy. And, you know, we got a really good Ohio State team uh, that, that's, that's highly thought of that we're going to have to strap it on against the first weekend. So uh, it, it, anytime you play a different color uniform, you have to play at a high level. And, and uh, it's just somebody in the conference this year rather than non-conference. Thanks, Tom. Anyone else? Lauren's not going to get me today. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thank you.